What's up gamers, welcome to GameStar, my name is Rob, and today I'm going to show you how to win just about any defense tournament in TD Battles. In case you haven't played TD Battles before, it is a competitive tower defense game where you field an assortment of monkeys whose sole purpose in life is to eliminate balloons. That's right, the survival of the monkey species is in your hands to prevent the evil balloons from crossing into monkey territory. But your enemy is also trying to stop balloons from crossing into their monkey territory. And if they succeed, you fail. So the idea is that you need to outlive your opponent. Now, TD Battles has two primary modes. That's Assault, where you increase your income by launching attacks at your opponent. And there's Defense, where there's very little you can do against your opponent other than a limited amount of power-up attacks. But primarily the idea is to outlast your opponent, to make it further in the game than your opponent can, to prevent balloons from escaping the map, and hope that your opponent can't stop his balloons from exiting. Now, tower choice is crucial, kind of obvious, because you're only allowed to choose three. Then you'll get a random fourth, of which you'll have one opportunity to switch out if you don't like it. So I just choose a nice standard base that I could keep up with just about any player, even a meta player. This isn't the best loadout to beat a meta player, but I certainly could keep up with them. I'm counting on this not being a meta player, mainly based on the 49% win ratio, but you can't always go by that. Now, there are a few good base towers to choose from. What makes a good base tower is a tower you could set down and then leave alone for about two to three rounds, building up income and that tower could still keep up with the balloons coming through. Now just as important as the tower choice is also the placement. You wanna put it in a spot where it can hit multiple lanes. So if it misses balloons coming through one, it has a second opportunity as they come through a second track. Now once you've placed down the base tower, do not go to upgrade it. That's gonna spend a lot of money and it's gonna take forever at this low $75 income to ever build any up. So you're gonna save up for the plus 70 that costs $1,000 income boost. Boom. Once you got that, now you're making 145 per tick. And that's a lot easier to work with. So immediately after getting that, I like to upgrade my towers, at least one on both the right and left. So one and one. When I mention tower upgrades, I'm gonna count how many from left to right you upgrade. So if I say two and two, that's two of the left upgrades and two on the right upgrades. If I say two and one, then that's two on the left, one on the right, so on and so forth. Now, I personally like to keep nice even numbers on income. You know, 100, 200, 300, so on and so forth. You can't obviously do that all the time because of the numbers you're working with, but I like to keep them as often as possible with even numbers. The only benefit to that is I've got the math figured out to hit the max income of $4,000. If you kind of screw it up on your way up, so you sometimes miss your opportunity to hit max money um, simply because of the way the math plays out. Now, my opponent has set down a second tower. After using the wizard, which is an expensive first tower, he sets engineer, which is actually is a good starting tower. Engineer is a very popular base tower. Uh, it's very effective all the way up until even mid game. Uh, wizard really starts to excel at end early game, mainly mid game. It starts to fall off at late game. Uh, the ninja, superior in early game, uh, does well at mid, more of a utility piece in late game. So rather than putting a second tower down, which is expensive, because you have to upgrade that one too, I just upgrade my ninja to at least 2-1. Two, 2 on the left, 1 on the right. I don't go 2-2 two and two with the ninja because I don't feel that distraction is all that great uh, for the price. Now eventually I'm going to have to get a wizard down because the wizard stops steel balloons, which show up around 19. I like to get it early and upgrade into the lightning as soon as possible so I don't have to worry about him and he's ready to go. I'm also, by watching my opponent drop yet another tower, I realized that this game can just be a fun one. This is not a serious player who's done the math. It's not a meta player. Um, so we can just have some fun. Now, I'm not underestimating them. They're still holding their own. 
but I'm just not worried about them pulling some sneaky stuff, like slipping a sniper down in the corner or something. Alright, so while this match plays out, you can kind of watch what I do and how I respond to it. I kind of want to break down the principles here. The tips I'm going to give you or the things I show you are an example, but you have a lot of freedom and there's a lot of different sets and combinations of towers that you can bring out that will easily last you beyond level 40. Um, give some variety. Uh, these are the things that I've chosen to do over time that's kind of worked for me or I have fun with. But allow me to give you the overall principles or foundational rules and from there you can kind of mold it in a way that, that works for you or is fun for you. So first off, you want a tower for early game, you want a tower for mid game, and essentially that means you want a tower that can break ceramics, can see camo, and can melt steel or destroy steel. And then you want either an income tower to really build up your money and purchase a mass amount of defensive towers or an end level high damage, generally expensive tower. That would be like uh, the Superman, the helicopter, uh, the plane. So some good examples for early on would be the Ninja because you can set it down and let it go a few rounds without any upgrades and it can keep up with it. Engineers are really good foundational pieces. They don't cost a lot going in, but can hold their own. And their upgrades are well worth it, the initial upgrades. And they're actually a source of income later on. It's a popular one. It's just not my personal choice. If there's water, the battleship, in early game at least, is far superior to the submarine. But the submarine is a lot of fun. And the submarine's more effective late game. It can hold its own early game, so it's a pretty versatile piece. But the battleship is probably one of the most effective early game pieces. By its third upgrade, which is not that expensive, it can hold off just about every balloon up to level 20, with the exception of steel balloons. It can't affect those, it can't hurt them. I don't believe there's much ceramic either. So it definitely needs a support piece, or a mid-level piece, that can, that can melt them. But it can see camo, it's super fast, it's just a great tower. Now don't forget, placement is still key. You want it to be able to hit several different lanes from its one position. Now wizards are a popular choice by some players, but I feel that they're a little too expensive early on. Like the stock wizard with no upgrades, it's actually a very weak piece. It does not do much at all. It's slow firing. Once you get their lightning though, which is the second upgrade on the left, they're incredibly effective. So I, I like to bring a wizard. They're more utilitarian in game, but they're fantastic in game. Which is gonna be level 20 to 30. Basically early game is gonna be levels one through 18. Uh, mid game will be 19 through 29, and end game will be pretty much 30 on. So good mid tier, your second choice for towers, ones that can uh, damage or melt steel balloons, uh, do damage to ceramics. That's going to be the glue gunner. The glue gunner is phenomenal. It both slows down the balloons and does massive damage once you upgrade them. The downside is they cannot see camouflage, so they need a support piece to help them. They are great. Wizards are fantastic secondary pieces uh, because they can see camouflage, they can melt steel, they do damage to ceramics, and they're very utilitarian in game uh, with tornadoes to slow down balloons or the phoenixes, which do a great amount of damage to Moabs. Now, my opponent's actually holding up really well here at this point. Um, it is a loss, most likely. For them because they've taken damage and I don't plan to. So once we hit max level, it's a it's a win for me. But they're holding up really well, considering it's level 23 and they're still holding everything off really well. We got really good defense set up, so I applaud them. Good job, Mr. Monkey. Alright, and finally the end level pieces. Uh, there's only a few that do a lot of damage uh, that are really worth that third slot. Snipers, first of all, are the most popular. They are the meta. And it's for good reason, because for some reason, the amount of cash they can drop is insane once you upgrade them on the right side, all the way to max. Uh, and they do massive damage. And also, if you upgrade them on the left, 
you can slow down Moabs with a little stun feature or stun effect. So, snipers are really, really good. If the game goes long enough, they do become pretty impotent. They lose their, their power and utility really late game. But they can get you there and all the cash you ever need. Uh, so they're fantastic. Some people use them as a secondary piece in place of a wizard. Uh, and they're very doable like that. It's just a little bit hard between their early level 20s to be able to keep up uh, with killing the steelies and ceramics um, and all the balloons that are coming with just a sniper. But if you can pull it off, then yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic choice. Probably a better choice than the wizard. I just have more fun with the wizard. Uh, another end level piece that's really good is the helicopter, especially if you upgrade the left side. Uh, massive damage. Again, they do begin to fail really late game, but they can take you all the way up there, and they're a lot of fun. Uh, Superman is the meta choice, probably the most powerful piece, but the most expensive. So laying down a whole bunch of snipers gets you the cash you need to really upgrade the Superman. I hate using the Superman. If I start a tournament, I usually eliminate Superman because it's such a cheesy move. It's too powerful of a piece, but whatever. The Gatling gun is also a great end level piece. It's a lot of fun. Um, the downside, of course, is you got to manually control it or be careful with your mouse placement because it wants to follow you. Um, in PC, there is a lock feature that's super nice. And with mobile, you know, you can just tap where you want to go. You just got to be careful when you go to play some, something else. But, uh, they're great in-game. Uh, and then the fourth piece, you know, if you can afford it, great. But this strategy is really just using three towers, so the fourth one is unnecessary. Also, the strategy, again, is for tournament play. Because in tournaments, there's an actual end level. And if somebody's taking damage by the end level, they lose. So in tournaments, you can play a different style. And that style being complete defense over income. But here's another principle that you have to know. Income is key. You want to get your income up as high as possible. And that's by purchasing income. And the most efficient way to do that, with the least amount of money, is to buy as big as possible. The small ones, like the $2 income and $15, have their place. But that should not be your priority. When I see players right out the gate buying plus $2, you're wasting money. That's not enough for you to buy anything. Like, how many ticks would have to go buy at $2 each or you can actually purchase something? Probably the entire game. Buy big early, supplement with, you know, 15, and then just fill in the holes with the plus 2. But as soon as you can, my, my goal, by level 20, I want my income to be 700 at least, and that's when I'll begin saving up for the plus 700 income at level 20. So I want, the, I want to aim for the plus 700, and I want my income to already be at 700. When you can start pulling in $1,400 plus per tick, you can start laying down some serious pieces. Another foundational piece to winning a defense match is to respect your money. Don't get crazy and drop a whole bunch of towers down early, because you have to spend the money to upgrade them. And upgraded towers are more useful than just a bunch of level one towers. Quality over quantity in this game almost every time. And then I'd say the final piece is to use your power-ups. They're free. Depending on what you got, you usually get about three of each of them. I highly recommend having uh, Eco Boost if you're playing defense and to be careful of the levels you choose. You want to take in enough money to make it worth it, but don't wait too long because by then your opponent's already got more money than they need anyways. So my favorite levels are between 8 and 11 for your first use, 14 to 16 on your second use, and then 20 or 21 uh, for your third and final use. And that should really set you up well. You're getting a large amount in, uh, but you're not waiting too long. Because getting that income early stacks up, and the amount of money you make over, over the entire game, uh, it, it adds up, it matters. And then also know your opponent. The first game, you're not going to know who you're up against. You just got to play carefully. But once the game's gone by, when your game ends, go jump into the last game and see how it went. You just need the first few seconds of the game to see how they purchase income. If they drop a tower and start upgrading it heavily right away, or they drop multiple towers, 
they're not really going to be a concern for you because they're not aware of the importance of income. They're not as aware as they need to be. On the other hand, if you see them set down defensive measures like tax or corrosive acid and not put a piece down, in fact, save their money up, maybe buy big or they're heading that way, well, you're going to need to be careful of that person because they have their mind in the right place and uh, that place is income. Only watch their game for a few seconds. It's rude to leave somebody waiting. Usually once it warns me that my game is up, I'll count to 10 slowly in my head, and then I'll exit the replay so that I'm back in plenty of time for the match to start without them waiting. If you do your homework on your opponent when you can, are careful with both your tower choices as well as placement, and keep income as the most important thing until you got well over $1,000 a tick at least, you will win the majority, vast majority of defense tournaments. Now, as far as back to the screen here, we're going into level 18 and my opponent only has a lightning wizard and a stage three ninja. That's ninjas three, one, three, two max. Uh, that's just not enough. That's not gonna do the trick. By 20, you want to be pushing for the big income, the big boy, the plus 700, and that takes $7,500. So you need to make sure that you have good defensive measures set up, you got the right towers, so that you can focus and just take a break and just collect money until you get to the top. But defense is more important. Not taking damage is more important than getting the money. So if it starts being a close call and your towers are falling behind, don't stretch and go for it. Don't chance it. Just trying to get that big money quicker. Go ahead and drop another tower if you need to or upgrade one of the ones you have to gain control. And when you have time and you have control, then go for the big purchase. And I think this is pretty much going to be the end for my opponent. But hey, level 20 is pretty good. All right, player, good game. All right, and while we can, let's go ahead and take a look, see at what our opponent, uh, our opponent's game. Let's see what kind of player they are. So there's the warning I got at the top. I uh, would normally do a slow count of 10, but for this, just time to get back and got back just in time. All right, so we got some water on this map, so we're definitely going with the battleship, probably the most efficient starting piece. We'll go with the wizard, which you could easily substitute out for the sniper or the glue monkey. Uh, but first, I'm going to go with the wizard, and then we'll have some fun with the Gatlin. Uh, don't really care for the ice monkeys. Hey! I guess if somebody's going to have it, rather it be me. All right, so I'm going to take you through this round, this being the last one. Um, kind of my idea. So, as usual, I'm going to drop my starting piece, and I'm just going to leave it alone. And wait for the money to uh, wait to collect my money. I'm gonna save up thousand dollars so I can buy the plus seventy income boost. Go ahead and speed it up a little bit here. You're not gonna miss anything. Now in this particular match, I actually got distracted by a text message I got, and I got wrapped up in a conversation with a person and wasn't watching the screen. And while my pirate ship was fighting his butt off to keep the balloons at bay, well, I didn't give him the support he needed. And uh, he couldn't help but let some balloons through. Actually, quite a few balloons. But look at that. Without being upgraded, look how many balloons he's able to take out. Level 7. A completely stock, no upgrade at all, pirate ship holding off 
all the balloons by itself. Now again, I'm in a text conversation here. I'm not trying to be cocky. I'm just completely oblivious to the screen and what's happening. But I still think it's a, it's a good example of how efficient and effective the pirate ship is as the stock piece. I believe this was about the time that I spotted my problem and remembered that I was in a tournament and immediately went to take quick measures. A little bit of a panic though. I, I In hindsight, I would have gone a different route, but I was just trying to do whatever I could to, uh, to catch back up to survive essentially. But now I'm the one who's under pressure because if my opponent doesn't take any damage by the time we get to end level, by the time we get to level 40, I immediately lose. My entire strategy is spun around and now working against me. So my only hope at this point is that my opponent can't quite make it to level 40. And so I just do what I do. I'm, a, I'm an okay spot. I need to catch up on money. My income's behind, but I won't take any more damage. And I know this at the time. I know I'm not going to lose the game from damage, at least not at this point, now that I've caught my mistake. But if my opponent can also keep up with the game and keep from taking damage, or even just takes less damage than I've taken, that's a loss. So I really screwed up on this one. But, you know, just keep pushing forward. Just have faith in your ability and have faith and the fact that other people have bad luck too. Keep in mind, your opponent's luck may be worse than yours. Or one can hope at least, right? Okay, so we're at level 16. Still got a long way to go. At this point, I don't plan on taking any more damage though. So I just I just have to make it longer than, than my opponent. Now there's certain key points in the game that you need to make sure, well, that you hit those marks. Level 19 is when Steelies come out, so by 18 definitely have your Steely Killer on the map and upgraded to as high as it needs to be to its job. By 30, make sure that you're able to bust out Moabs. Moabs are the very big balloons, they're mother of all balloons, that's what Moab stands for. Uh, when you kill them, they break into a whole bunch of other balloons. I believe ceramics to start. They degrade down into standard balloons. But not only do you have to kill the Moab, you've got to be prepared to destroy all the balloons that are going to come from it. Or spawn when it's destroyed. Now, I've kind of made the mistake here. 19 came, and I'm not ready for it. I'm still distracted by my phone. Uh, but that's okay. This this wizard will do the job, and then I'll need to set another wizard up north a bit to uh, to tackle any of the steelies coming out, and pretty much just to to zap a few layers off the balloons as they come out. Now I like to put fire wizards up top, fill the whole circle on this map with fire wizards, except. The one in the center bottom of the ring, the one that I just placed, I like to make that a tornado wizard. So it'll blow balloons back into more of the fire wizards. So the fire wizards will shred the balloons as they come, then the tornado will blow them back to the beginning again, where the fire wizards can shred them some more, and so on and so forth, and usually eliminate them before they get past that ring altogether. Uh, then in the second ring down from that, I like to set uh, two tornado wizards, one on each side. Just to, again, kind of blow the balloons back up to the fire. And then the bottom ring, I'll copy the top ring. It'll be all fire wizards except for one tornado wizard. Uh, I do like to put two battleships in each of the lakes on this map. So I'll have a total of four. And after that, I just bring out my final piece. Uh, whatever that may be. Whether it be a helicopter, sniper, uh, Superman if I'm feeling like an uh, asshole. So I'm kind of placing the wizards down where I plan to have them, 
And then if the game goes long enough and once I have the income, I'll upgrade them. Uh, all three of the ones you see will be tornado wizards. And then I'll fill in the rest with fire wizards. Now, the battleship is actually probably the most useful and justifiable cost-wise at its current level, which is uh, three on the left, two on the right. But it is still pretty good uh, in level as an aircraft carrier. So if you upgrade it on the left to four, it costs $7,000 to make that last step. But then jet fighters will stream off of it constantly and do massive damage to Moabs as well as other balloons. So they're really, really good as well, but they're not great in pieces. They're justifiable to have, they're best early, they do really well mid, and they can still kind of help in level. So I'm very, very comfortable with Battleship. It may be the one piece that is the most important to me, but it's only available, of course, on a water map. Now, I'll be honest, I'm a little bit nervous because my opponent really seems to know what they're doing. They got a minimal amount of towers out, but they're upgrading those towers. They're being careful where they place them. So I'm not feeling too good about this round. Just because the balloons are kind of pushing past the first ring, I decided to go ahead and upgrade the fire for now. If the match goes long enough, I'll uh, swap them out for Tornado Wizard. I just really want to buy the plus 700 income boost, uh, and then I'll feel really comfortable. I'll be ahead of the game, and I can really put down some some towers, some monkeys. You know, as far as tower defense games go, uh, TD Battles, it's just fun. It's cute. You gotta love it. I mean, it can be very frustrating. Uh, it's not the game, though. It's, it's dealing with players and overused strategies. But moments like this where you're losing and then before you know it, your opponent tanks and you take a win. Well, it's just moments like that that make this game outstanding. We'll go ahead and chalk up another win for old Far Too Devious. And that, my friends, is how you win just about any TD Battles defense tournament. It's all about income. Income, proper tower choice, and tower location. That's all you need. It's that easy. Well, that's all I got for you today. I look forward to the next time we play some games. Hey, get in there and practice and just get beat. Get beat a bunch. It doesn't matter. Cause at the end of the day, you're still a game star. That is what matters. Yeah.